Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick video to show you why if you have a leaky rear, rear seal on a 2005 to 2019 or so Nissan Titan with the M226 or really any type of rear differential which is set up like this, uh, this is actually what they call a Dana Super 44. Um, it's very similar to what comes in Jeeps um, and other, a lot of things use this and there's just enough proprietary crap to make it annoying on the Nissan. Um, but this has actually been replaced before. You can see some idiot put sealant around the outside edge. It was beyond painful to get off. Um, and so what I want to show is why you can't just replace that, throw in a new, throw, throw in a new um, seal, use an impact to put everything back together. And it mainly comes down to this right here. Oops, I just lost it. This piece right here, which is called a crush sleeve. This one, is, it goes on just like this. Then your factory bearing goes down. This is, I've made this a setup bearing, so it's gonna slide on easier than stock. So your setup bearing goes on, then your oil slinger, then your flange, and then your nut. And what happens is when you tighten down that nut, it puts pressure on this, squishing this, so it ends up looking like this one. And just to show you a comparison of what came off, what's stock versus what's on there, this is new, this is old. You see how the, the difference in thickness? I don't even need to measure it to show you how much it is. So basically, factory torque says, if you follow the FSM, the factory service manual, which you can download off of Nico forms, is you start at 200 foot pounds, you go up to 500 and some, until you get this squished the correct amount so that you have the right preload on this. So how close is that tolerance? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up wrong. I'm going to put, I'm going to put in the incorrect amount, and then I'm going to do too much, and then I'm going to do too little, just so you can see how tight this is. And so this right here, if I measure this, so I want to give you guys a nice example. Let me zero this out. These are two shims. I already know this is too tight. This is not even going to really turn correctly. This is 0.956 millimeters. That combined with the shim, and so this uh, that's the other thing that I'm showing here, is I'm not going to use a crush style. I'm going to use, this is an awesome tool. It lets me replace that crush shim, uh, the crush, um, uh, what do they call this thing? The crush washer with an actual shim kit where it goes together just like so and then um why am i losing things no. it goes together just like so and that replaces the factory crush sleeve and so here let me put this together this is not going to turn but i want you to see just how tight this is Let me put it together wrong. Bearing first. Then your oil slinger. Then your flange. Uh, where's the washer? Then your washer. Then your nut. Now, obviously, when I put this together for the final time, I will put it together with new equipment here but this is just in the setup phase so I can dial in the accurate um, the accurate pieces. Right. I'm not going to go any tighter because I don't want to destroy my bearings. I can't turn that. That is too tight. Okay, so now let me go in. I'll show you how much of a difference. Uh, for those of you wondering, the right nut size for this is 33 millimeter. 
but he had to modify it so it would actually fit inside the flange. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to throw in just 30 thousandths more. And so if I measure this, yeah, so this is a 30 thousandths shim and it's going to be too loose. So I've all I've done, and just to show you, 30 thousandths, that's how big it is. And so you got to remember, impact guns, they are not precision machines. They are meant for brute force. And let me fix, let me get off whatever it is that you want to get off. They don't like... You can't do anything precise with the impact gun in, ever. In fact, it's a really good way to break things, strip things, especially when you have, like this one does, 1,800 foot-pounds of torque. Love this Milwaukee. One of my favorite tools. All right, so I know this is now way too loose. So if I throw... An actual newton meter gauge on this. I'll show you rotational. Get it in there. It's not even registering. I have 0.75 newton meters. Much, much too loose. So let's take this apart again. My hands are greasy now. Come on. And I'm going to drop it down. Just drop the whole thing. So now I'm going to take that 30 thousandths one off that I just slid on there. And I'm going to go to the thinnest ones I've got. I believe it's this one. this one this is 0.14 millimeter stick so we're talking from 30 thousandths this to 0.14 this you're gonna see this is now still gonna be too tight I did all this just for an example sake setting it up wrong Oops, it helps if you put the main washer in there. Test this out. See, it's still pretty tight. And so you see, we're still set at 0.5 from the last one. I'm going to do this. I'm almost off the scale. 4.5. Or 4.75. So... 
that was, so we went from too tight to way too loose with just 15 thousandths of an inch. This is why when someone says, oh, just use an impact to place the rear seal. That's why they're wrong and they have no idea how this whole setup is correct because there's no way with this you could accurately tighten this back to factory specs and not squish and not squish that the the crush the crush sleeve if you, cr if you squish it by 0.15 millimeters you're now too tight and you'll ruin your bearings if you're too loose well the whole damn thing is going to come apart so I know this is the right size for this. And I will, of course, clean all this up better. Please don't blame me for having dirty stuff right here. I'm doing this for example's sake. Let me take out this one. This one's 0 0.20. So 0 0.15 was too short, too small. 0 0.30 was too big as in too loose, 0 0.20 should be right on the money in this particular carrier's setup. Oh, look at that. Look at what I forgot to put back in there. It's not going to register right. I made a mistake. I'll take it back apart. That's your oil slinger. And because that does go between the, the carrier and the, the, um, the shim, it does make a difference. At least in my non-scientific YouTube example. I'm going to show you guys. There we go. Set this thing back to zero so you can see. All right. Oh, let's go right with it. And look at that. 2.5, right on money. So, again, back to the FSM. Pinion bearing needs to be between 1.7 and 3.8 newton meters turning resistance. And if you look on the back, on the main specs, you notice it's exactly what it says right here for pinion. And it's, you see, if you see here, it says pin, drive pinion preload uh, torque. That is for either gear ratio. And you see the various gear ratios have a different when you have the whole carrier in there. Because once you add the, the carrier rotating assembly, this is going to take more force to turn. So I'll come back to that in another video. But there has been enough questions about, hey, I got a leaky seal. How do I replace that? Well, you need to do it right. And when theory, now because I have, I'm going to have solid spacer in there instead of the crush sleeve, if this ever leaks on my truck again, I can just replace this because I can't tighten anything down tighter than normal. If you've got this style in there, I don't recommend it. You can do it in a pinch if there's something really, really wrong, but to, to do this correctly, you really need to 
pull out the whole part of your diff. You got to get this out of there, fix it all, replace the bearings, and reset it so that you got the right rotating uh, torque on it. So, anyway, hope that helps.